So isn't it interesting, as we are now seeing pro-abortionists completely losing their minds, they don't know what to do now that they are on, on the other side of the Supreme Court's decision. Because for 50 years, guess what, friends? We have been the ones who have had to be creative and patient and smart about spreading the pro-life message. And nobody does that better than the Southwest Coalition for Life. So as, as we've seen the radical abortionists, all, all they've been able to do since, since actually before Dobbs is to go out and bomb pregnancy centers and you know, commit acts of, of vandalism and, and, and riot. Um, so when uh, abortions came to an end in Mississippi, it's the famous Dobbs case, of course. Well, the woman who owned that abortion facility decided she was going to open up a new business in Las Cruces, New Mexico, of all places. Well, that's where Mark Cavalieri and his team and his amazing supporters in New Mexico and Texas decided, you know what, we're going to have a little welcome party for them. And that's exactly what they did last night. Incredible turnout. Mark Cavalier, Mark Cavalier, I'm sorry, Mark, Mark Cavalier joins us now um, from New Mexico to, to talk about this. Mark, wow, it looks like you just had a, a, an overwhelming turnout of pro-life supporters last night on the very spot where they want to be performing abortions. That's correct. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jim, for highlighting this. Um, you know, the state of New Mexico, uh, abortion remains completely unregulated up to the moment of delivery uh, for any reason, even minors without parental consent. And uh, so we have been getting overrun. It's it's uh, it's just as bad as North Korea and China. Um, yep. And since the Dobbs decision, it seems like every few days we're learning about a new abortion business that is uh, fleeing uh, to New Mexico because they're going to be able to continue without any medical oversight. And so we're going from five or six uh, abortion facilities in the state uh, across the state of New Mexico to tripling that number, possibly quadrupling it. Anywhere from 15 is now rumors of even possibly over 20 uh, over the years to come of abortion businesses relocating here, including, of course, this infamous, uh, you know, Jackson Women's Health Organization, now renamed the Las Cruces Women's Health Organization, which the, the name Las Cruces means the crosses, the city of the crosses. And uh, so that's where, you know, we've had a lot of people across New Mexico and in our city feeling a little disheartened and overwhelmed. And so uh, we had this big event with a lot of uh, national speakers coming in uh, to really help people know the actions that they can take. Yeah, and it was so good to see the, the rector of the cathedral there last night. I mean, you, you had a real all-star cast. You had my buddy Mark Lee out there, too. Mark Lee has been amazing. He's just been working tirelessly, uh, considering the fact that, you know, the state of New Mexico where abortion is unregulated by virtue of the fact that it's not banned, but nor is it uh, protected. It's not even on the books. And so um, it, it, there's opportunity. I know some uh, or organizations across the state are talking to Mark Lee about Sanctuary City for the Unborn Ordinances at the city levels. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of people, David B. Wright, uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of people came in for this. Yeah, so, so Mark, you know, when you were describing that, like what they have in store for, for New Mexico, and, and you said it right, this is, they permit abortions right up until the time of birth. Nobody, no, no, no place on earth does that except for North Korea and China. So let's, let's just get that straight. I mean, this is barbarism and this is, this is child murder. And it just made me think this is really an industry. This is the abortion industry, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And, and what we're seeing is that, you know, as often is the case with uh, more scandalous type industries, uh, they flee to where there is no regulations and no health oversight. And and not only is this, all, you know, obviously uh, an injustice against children, but it's been an egregious injustice against women uh, who really now are being funneled into New Mexico already just in the last year since the Texas heartbeat law has been in effect. And it's, we're, it's expected now to even increase further. Uh, we're at a point where 
three out of every four abortions in New Mexico are being performed on out of state uh, 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 women who are coming in and being, uh, you know, now there's corporations that are sending women in uh, for abortions so that uh, they can continue to be more, uh, uh, you know, utilized for the, uh, you know, more productive employees. Um, and, and, and what we're seeing is even the leadership, uh, the, you know, government in New Mexico is kind of promoting what's becoming a, a sense of abortion tourism uh, to travel people in across the state uh, for totally unregulated abortions. Mark, uh, what what can be done about this? I, I, I know that uh, you know Mark Lee Dixon has has talked about you know, sort of the the Texas law that that is is on the books and, and trying to to make this a law which would allow actually a citizen of Texas, I guess, or New Mexico even, to sue the 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 provider. Right. So there are conversations happening um, on that front. And there, there's multiple things that need to be happening. Uh, similar to how the last 50 years we've had multiple, uh, you know, approaches to overturning Roe from uh, legislative to uh, charitable to, you know, to prayer and all of that. Uh, we still we now need to do that at the state and local levels. And so um, there's a lot of important conversations happening. Uh, one of the things, too, I think that uh, isn't getting talked about enough is the importance of litigation. Uh, you know, we work with a great uh, attorney, Mike Seibel, uh, with Abortion on Trial out of Albuquerque, who helps women who have been harmed by the abortion industry in the state of New Mexico, when we see uh, consistently women being harmed because of the lack of any oversight. Um, and, and those are the cases that help to expose uh, the injustices, the really the, what I call the reproductive injustice that is happening against women in New Mexico and from across the country coming to New Mexico. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of things. And then, and then you know, my organization, we're coming in uh, to offer really a, a, a kind of a, a, a uh, authentic definition of what women's health care is uh, that, you know, they're calling themselves the women's health organization. Uh, but we're just here to say, you know, uh, abortion is not health care. Uh, no woman should be in a position to feel that, you know, being told or expected to alter, suppress and destroy the normal healthy functions of her natural body in order to achieve her goals. And that we don't, we don't reject that. I, I mean, we reject that as a definition of healthcare and we want to be right next door to offer, uh, you know, an authentic whole person approach to care. Yes. And well, tell, tell me about uh, the, the pregnancy resource centers there in, in Las Cruces and, and the work that they are doing, Mark. We, we have a, some amazing pregnancy centers in Las Cruces. Uh, there's been two uh, centers, CareNet and uh, Turning Point in Las Cruces, who've been really holding the front line um, and just seeing a huge increase of women uh, that, you know, coming in and, and uh, uh, almost more than we can handle. And so we're needing, we need more support right now. We're needing more organizations. We need to outnumber uh, the abortion facilities, you know, two to one, five to one. Um, and th that's a challenge right now because they're coming in by the droves. And so uh, we're coming in uh, to, to offer similar support in, in working with, uh, you know, other organizations in the community uh, with uh, Guiding Star Center, uh, which is, uh, it goes even beyond just that initial pregnancy intervention uh, help, but uh, really to say, you know, can we can we do more to help women even after she chooses life so that she's not going back out to the same secular medical system that is broken is, and got her into that situation in the first place? You know, there's a healthcare system that's telling women their fertility is a disease to be suppressed, that pregnancy is like a tumor or a commodity, that childbirth is to be feared, lactation, uh, you know, breastfeeding a lot of times is seen as a burden and an inconvenience. So we're, we're working right now to bring in lactation consultants and doulas and midwives um, and all those types of professionals that can actually walk with a woman. And, you know, our, our medical director is an OBGYN uh, to, to not just help her embrace life, but actually help her through that process of childbirth and motherhood. Well, right. And, and Mark, you know, these, these women are so spiritually broken a, as well. And, and healing needs to take place, um, you know, even when they do uh, decide to have the baby, often by themselves with, with very little support, because we don't want them just having the baby and then, you know, going out and uh, and getting pregnant again with uh, with just another person. And, you know, that that's a consequence of the culture of Roe versus Wade for the last 50 years, that instead of actually 
uh, trying to make a society more accommodating to women has been telling women that, you know, they've been the ones for 50 years telling women what to do with their bodies, saying that, you know, you need yeah. to subject yourselves to these uh, really traumatic chemical abortion uh, pills and these invasive surgeries in order to be successful. And as a consequence of men, uh, you know, being told they can basically use, abuse and objectify women uh, essentially for sex without consequence. And, and you know, that, that what you just described is a consequence of the Roe versus Wade culture. So this is an opportunity, I think, for us to be there where there's a lot of misinformation and confusion right now of the state of women's health care uh, to, to, to help define what that is in a way that actually respects women when the other side can't even define what a woman is. So. Yeah. Amen, Mark. So I was reading your bio and I, I saw that you have studied deeply into the psychology of persuasion, you know, as it pertains to being you know, out there, you know, on the sidewalk, you know, on the front lines. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about that, Mark. Yeah, so we, uh, we, through our Coalition for Life, we uh, have a program called Her Care Connection. It's a very woman-oriented focus. And what we've found is, is rather than uh, trying to talk someone out of a commitment that they've made, uh, it's better to just help them create a new, better commitment. Um, so when we have our outreach program, we have young adults as outreach interns, um, and they reach out in a, a very uh, professional way with uniform, you know, as as saying, you know, we're here with a nonprofit referral program to get connect you with free health care. Not a lot of people know about. Um, and we help them to realize that, uh, you know, to make a new commitment to exploring this. Uh, we don't really uh, we, we don't want to come across as a threat to uh, to the hope that she has in, you know, so abortion possibly being a solution to her crisis. Um, instead, we just say, here's what we have to offer, you know, and let, let's get you in and talk about this and make that new commitment. And we found that to be uh, we, we've had a you know higher number of uh, women coming in to seek that information when we're not just out there, you know, kind of uh, telling them what not to do. We're instead we're inviting, inviting them right. uh, into uh, something, something new. new. Yeah. Mark, how many women do you like? Uh, this would be hard to ever quantify, I guess. But how many women do you think are, are truly on the fence about having that abortion? In our experience, most of the women going in uh, who feel they have no choice but abortion are not pro-choice. Um, some, you know, sometimes they've never really thought about the issue. Sometimes they're even more pro-life. They just suddenly are scared. They're in a situation where they're feeling hopeless, where everyone in their life has been telling them what they can't do, what they cannot do. They, you know, you cannot be successful right now and be a mom. You cannot finish school right now and do this. Um, and and you know, our employers now and, and media, uh, you know, they're all saying, you know, oh, just fly to New Mexico and have an abortion. So you can, uh, you know, be a more productive employee for us and to trying to normalize all that. And so most women are really just feeling very overwhelmed with the pressure and are very grateful to hear it's, it's, it's a it's a pretty small minority uh, who have the loudest voice, usually who are the ones kind of championing this thing as, as this right that they're celebrating. Um, the reality is most women are, you know, they, they just they're, they're really scared. And uh, we need to recognize that, too, that uh, usually and even John Paul II um, in, in uh, his his uh, letter to women uh, recognized that usually, uh, you know, the, the one who's at fault behind an abortion is usually the man who has failed her, who has mm. failed to step up as a consequence of this Roe versus Wade mentality. And so, you know, we're not, we're not there to shame or judge, you know, she's been a victim of this. And if she says no uh, to an abortion in the face of this billion dollar abortion corporation and this Roe versus Wade mentality that's been telling her to alter and destroy part of her body, she is the hero in that story. In that story, and we're not going to take that away from her. You know, we we don't. We're just there as the sidekicks to kind of you know give her some information to help her make a right decision. Um, but you know that we really celebrate moms being the heroes. We don't. We're not out to count babies saved and things like that. We're here to count how many women have we been able to help. Oh, Mark, the, the work you're doing is, is so impressive. Um, so tell me, is, is there any hope for New Mexico uh, to, 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 uh, to have a Virginia in New Mexico? You know, we finally turned the tables on the, the Democrats and the radical abortion LGBT agenda in Virginia. I mean, is, is New Mexico just a lost cause um, electorally? <laughs> So I, I I put more hope in the people of New Mexico right now. Um, 
Uh, they do have a super majority in the courts and the legislature uh, that are, you know, want to protect abortion as this tourist, you know, attraction for the state of New Mexico. Um, but the people of New Mexico are starting to stand up and say enough is enough. And we're going to come, you know, we're we're going to do this, you know, with or without uh, the support of the state. We actually saw this in Las Cruces. The reason we our organization started seven years ago was in response to a separate abortion center that opened there. Um, and after two years, they closed. Uh, citing uh, financial trouble for suddenly not getting enough patients. Again, this is in the state with no, you know, no abortion restrictions that they had been celebrating because they're just in it for the the the, the profit. They're just in it for the bottom dollar. So if if we can help, uh, you know, most businesses operate on about a thirty percent overhead. So if we can help even one out of every three women who are going in uh, feeling that they have no other. Uh, option, but an abortion, you know, that, that could be enough uh, to, to cut into the profit incentives uh, for these abortion corporations that that's all they're in it for. We're doing this, you know, we, we never financially benefit from any decision a woman makes. Um, and so that's what we need to see more of in New Mexico. That's right. Abortion is, is big business. They're not making any money with their, uh, you know, other services that they claim to offer. I mean, that's what this is all about. And good for you, Mark. Good for you. I mean, you've got a track record. Let's just hope and pray that this child murder facility gets shut down. I mean, that that's 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 a great strategy right there, right? Is to just to get these places closed down. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of interested too that I mean the fact that there's going to be so many abortion providers flocking in New Mexico, they're they're, you know, to the what extent are they going to be competing against each other, you know, and, and kind of working against each other. Um, so, you know, it's an interesting thing. So yes, pray for New Mexico. I don't think it's a lost cause. There's a lot of good people here. Um, and, you know, while our politics are determined by Santa Fe and Albuquerque, the rest of the state is saying we recognize we need to do more at the city level, at the local level, at the, you know, through our churches, through our people to, yep. to help women. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, at our city gate, uh, you know, as scripture tells us and, and say, you know, we're, we're, we're going to not stand for this uh, as a city, as communities. And, um, uh, so it's going to be very interesting, you know, even after I, I point out, you know, the the the, road, uh, the Supreme Court, you know, they've made mistakes in the past with Dred Scott. You know, they said, quote, the Negro is not a human being. Uh, and when they corrected themselves, it took decades for the rest of the country to catch up. You know, there were many states that continued uh, that old antiquated mentality uh, up until the 1960s. And even, you know, we still feel the effects of that today. And now they've done it again. You know, they said with Roe versus Wade, the word person does not include the unborn. They've now corrected themselves. And New Mexico is going to be one of those lingering states that is trying to live in this antiquated mentality, telling women that, uh, you know, that abortion is the best we have to offer. And we say that, no, women deserve better. Amen to that, Mark. Well, look, brother, uh, thank you so much. Um, you're off to a good start um, in opposing this agenda that, that's really just all about murder. That's what it's about. I mean, and uh, um, let us know. Let us know the, the next time you have an event. Give me a heads, heads up. I'll fly out there, Mark. And I, um, <laughs> Well, thank you. That. We'll let you know the next time we have a big event like this. Yeah. All, all right. Uh, thank you, brother. That is Mark Cavalier of the Southwest Coalition for Life. Go check out their website. It's really awesome. Um, so, Mark, uh, keep up the good work, brother. Thank you so much, Jim.